If you've been on this channel for a little while, you were probably just watching the hit series Moses and the Ten Commandments, which is on at 9 p.m. on weekdays. But if you missed it, don't worry, you can catch the repeats at 12 p.m. the next day. But now it's time to welcome you to my show. I'm Chrissy B, and you are watching the UK's only TV program dedicated to mental health and well being. Now, having beaten depression and other mental health issues, I'm all about fighting back and not allowing life's problems to bring you down. That's why this show exists and also why I created the MHD Challenge, which stands for Mental Health Dance Challenge, which is the world's first and only dance challenge teaching people to fight back against depression. But I didn't always know how to fight back. It's something that I actually learned to do with the help of a charity. So what if you're going through a problem and you want to fight back, but don't feel you're capable or have what it takes to do so? Or maybe you already see yourself as a fighter, but would like to get even stronger. Stay tuned for lots of tips on this show. We start with Rama Siva, who stammered since he was eight. Having made good progress with his speech in the last two years, he's on the show today to share his experience and tell us why stuttering doesn't have to be a lifelong sentence. We then go to psychologist Dr. Audrey Tang, talking about why some people give in to situations instead of fighting and how a person can get stronger. We'll then be having tea with news correspondent Helena Shard in this week's A Helping of Happy, which brings positive news to your screens. Then it's over to our fitness expert Natalia Katoska for a simple but effective workout. Nutritionist Lily Suter is back, this time with a recipe that will give you energy and wake you up for a good fight. And Dr. Rob Hicks will be answering your medical questions in this week's Doctor's Answers. But we're not done yet. Continuing our theme of putting up a good fight, we're also taking this to your home. Perhaps you're surrounded by lots of things you know you need to have a good clear out and you're ready to roll up your sleeves, but you have no idea where to start. Don't fret because we have declutter expert Sally Walford on hand to give you some very useful tips. So as you can see, plenty to get through. So let's get cracking with our real life story guest, Rama Siva. Welcome to the show, Rama. Hi, Chrissy. <laughs> so, so lovely to have you on because you have been through quite a few struggles regarding the stuttering. And, but can you tell us when did you actually notice or when did people notice that you stuttered? Yes, so from the age of th three, I uh, apparently stumbled mm. over my words like most toddlers do. But it was only when I was eight years of age that uh, the teachers, uh, they labeled me as a stutterer mm -hmm. and they sent me to the speech therapy jail, as I call it. Why do you call it the jail? <laughs> because I was stuck there for over 30 years thinking oh, that no. I was a stutterer. And mm -hmm. to be honest, my speech, yes, I stumbled, but I didn't have to be labeled as a stutterer and I didn't have to suffer in mm -hmm. my own mind the things that I went through. What kind of things did you go through? So during my teenage years, I was quite lonely. I wasn't able to uh, make good friends. Mm -hmm. I wasn't uh, comfortable in my own skin to really communicate with them. I was just, I was just very self-conscious about my speech and about myself. But was it all coming from your side or were people actually trying to make friends with you and, and you didn't want that kind of attention? What, what would you say it was more of? Um, I think it was um, me not being able to really communicate, okay. not really share experiences, feelings yeah. with my uh, companions from school. Mm -hmm. And that really affected me in terms of uh, not going out with them and subsequently going to university. The same thing happened as well. Really? Mm -hmm. um, even though I went on to a speech therapy course at the age of 18 at my local hospital, mm -hmm. I, um, I found or I saw other people, other males who were in their 30s, 40s and 50s, stut stuttering. So it was my belief that I would speak like this forever because I could mm -hmm. see other men yeah. who stuttered and who had difficulties in their lives. And that made you f feel worse when you saw um, I just took on the belief that I would stutter forever. 
Okay. What, what would you say <clears throat> was your worst moment in all of this then, in all this experience that you've had? Um, I think finding out that uh, the first secret love of, of my life, uh, when I was uh, at uni, mm-hmm. um, I had a crush on a girl and I found that, and I found out that she passed away oh, uh, wow. a few years later when I tried to get in touch with her. Uh-huh. And I never told her about how I felt and I regretted that. Mm-hmm. So it was from that moment, actually 10 years ago, 2009, that I decided to get out there and do something about my speech and about my self-confidence, self-esteem. And I went to Spain to learn Spanish, went mm-hmm. traveling in South America, and I started to speak to people. And if I stumbled, I stumbled. And um, it didn't really stop me li- living my life. That's very interesting that you use like a, a very tragic situation that happened, whereas most people would like sort of get feel really down and, you know, people react differently to things, but you took that as something to kind of prompt you to do something about your situation. Yes, um, I was down for a couple of weeks uh, because it did affect me quite a bit, mm-hmm. uh, realizing that I would never see uh, the girl that I really liked ever again. Mm-hmm. And... Um, but I had to move on uh, yeah. because the year previously in 2008, I was working in Bermuda and those were the six, six longest months of my life. It was a great time, but because of the stutter and because of my self-confidence, I didn't have any friends there and I felt really homesick. Mm-hmm. Um, so I then joined the UK foreign office and travel the world uh, fixing computers at the embassies. Mm -hmm. And it was in one such meeting at the British Embassy in Washington DC, where I was the team leader, that the stutter held me at gunpoint. I stuttered so badly, it was embarrassing. I felt Mm -hmm. so ashamed of myself. And then I thought, what the hell am I doing here? I've been on a speech therapy program for the previous eight years. And yet, when I needed to speak, I couldn't speak at Mm -hmm. all. So I had to do something about it. And so I'd resolved to actually work on myself, work on my beliefs, and just get out there and face my demons. Um, I'm on this show to share with people who stutter that it is possible to let go of stuttering. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you stumble or stutter. Yeah. It matters only in your mind. I know from, from first-hand experience that Tony Blair stumbles when pressed. Even Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook mm-hmm. stumbles as well. In fact, a lot of people stumble, but they're not labeled as stutterers and they're not sent to speech therapy forever, mm-hmm. which I was, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just amazing Right, looking at you now, you'd never think that you weren't confident about yourself before because, you know, you, you're here on TV now, you're doing an interview, you look very confident, very comfortable, and it, it's just nice to, to prove to the viewers, and not just those, for example, that have, you know, been diagnosed or been labelled as a stutter, but anyone actually that's going through a problem that they find embarrassing, mm. that you can overcome it. You just It's that self-belief and just going out there like you did and just... Doing your thing, do not let in, allowing this situation to stop you. Yes, indeed. I think the uh, most important thing was actually going after my dream and writing a book mm-hmm. because I really wanted to write a book, but I didn't know what I could write about. So I interviewed 20 people, 20 entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. The first person I interviewed, the interview <coughs> wasn't quite as smooth as I would mm-hmm. have liked it but I went through it and I found 19 other people and then I wrote the book. And all of them, they suffered um, setbacks or they had difficulties in their lives, but they all worked on their inner game. They worked on their mindset and that is what they did. And it was only after I completed the book and viewed the recordings that I saw that I may stumble here and there, but I did not block or stutter like I did when I was a teenager. That's great. Now, just before we go, because we have almost run out of time, um, Rama, but you've also got a self-help group, haven't you? I have, yes. Um, I'm based in Stevenage, and Mm -hmm. I run the support group with a guy called Ramesh from Letchworth, who lives near me. 
and we are always uh, always hoping new people come and join us and they mm -hmm. can just search on Facebook or on Google for Stuttering Mind and okay. they can find the group. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming to share your stories. Very inspiring. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. And all the best with your books, you, other books I'm sure you're going to write <laughs> and all yes. your other work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. All right, everybody. So now it's time to go over to Dr. Audrey Tang for this week's Psychology Matters. Welcome to the show, Audrey. Thanks for having me, Chrissy. So, a nice topic, this one. Really positive. Love yes. it. <laughs> okay. But so, why is it, do you think, that there are some people that give in, whereas others fight? Very, very um, evolutionary in terms. Um, the fight or flight response was one of the most common instincts that people have, and somewhere mm -hmm. deep down, we still have this. Um, the idea is either we face the foe or we run away from it. But as this idea has developed, psychologists have said that maybe some people have something called an internal locus of control or an external one. Now, this is just a model. It's an idea of how people might think. People with a strong internal locus believe that they have a lot of control over the environment. They do something, it affects mm. the environment. Somebody with a very strong external locus tends to believe that no matter what they do, it's almost either fatalistic or somebody else yeah has more power mm -hmm. and unfortunately due to upbringing that can also be reinforced and learned okay. so if you're in a situation whereby you throw your toys out of the pram and an adult comes along picks them back up again you have an idea that if you do something a response will happen but if say you've been neglected or if that that support is inconsistent you may begin to learn that no matter what you do you don't it know whether work. anything okay. will happen and wow. then you begin to learn a form of helplessness. You begin to think, well, it doesn't matter what I do, it won't work out yeah, for me. Wow. So some people just simply haven't been taught ways of managing and building resilience. So it's not as clear cut as we're either born with it or, or we're mm. not. It can be learned, but the good thing is, if it can be learned, things can be unlearned, things can be changed, and behaviour is dynamic. That was my next question, actually. How can people actually get stronger and be able to face situations? Then? One of the biggest things is actually to recognise what strength is. A lot mm. of the time, when we've been through difficult times, we go into survival mode. So this becomes, I will become hard and I will get there. And that's not actually strength. That maybe putting up a barrier, but strength is recognizing that we are vulnerable mm -hmm. and accepting that, that it's okay, that we do feel pain, we do feel hurt, shame, guilt, all of these emotions that we don't like expressing. But in recognizing and accepting that this happens and it's okay, that's how we build up our strength. So first okay. of all, it's recognizing really that strength is not just shutting everybody yeah. out, mm -hmm. it's recognizing our vulnerability. Um, thinking about who we hang around with is really oh, yes, important. That's very important. Some mm -hmm. people are quite toxic to our mental yeah, well-being. Yeah. And sometimes the way to look at it is maybe choose our friends with as much care as we choose something prized. Think about it. Do they support us? Do they give us joy? And if they don't, then is it worth our while spending so much mm. time and energy with them? But similarly, if we find a friend who does give us joy, who supports us, who helps us, keep them, look yeah, after yeah, them, yeah. because they will be hard to come by. It's not as easy as all of that. Recognizing time and energy are valuable to us. And what I mean by that is, sometimes we like to give, we like to help, but only give as much as you can afford, mm -hmm. because if you're always giving, then where do you replenish a lot of that? Hopefully you've got good friends, but if not, then that can be problematic. Mm -hmm. um, dealing with it as well. Now this one, I want to explain a little bit more because I don't mean, oh, just get on with it and pull yourself together. What, we don't what say I, that on the show, do No, we? exactly. <laughs> yeah. What I mean by yeah. dealing with it is facing it. Yeah. A lot of the time something unpleasant happens and we go, oh, oh, I mm, don't want to think about that. But actually, again, it's the vulnerability, accepting yeah, vulnerability. Yeah. If we look at it, reflect on it and think, oh, wow, why did that happen? We might be able to avoid it happening again in future. Right. Um, one other thing is just when you remember to stand up for yourself, do it from a place of recognizing your value, not from a place of wanting somebody else to suffer or somebody else to lose, because that puts a very different weight into what it is you're mm. saying. So if you can recognize your value, that helps. 
The last thing I would want to add is when we're trying to help other people as well is to recognise that it's all very well to say, oh, you know, when life gives you lemons, just make lemonade. Um, Linehan, who is a very uh, recognised clinician who brought together the idea of dialectic behavioural therapy, DBT, said you often need sugar to make lemonade and some people don't have that understanding of sweetness of life mm -hmm. because they haven't had that kindness, that compassion shown to them. So when we're helping, it doesn't hurt to offer that kindness to them. Definitely. Audrey, thank you so much, my darling. We'll see you again very soon. Thank you. All right, everybody, stay tuned because after the break, we have our news correspondent, Helena Shard, with this week's A Helping of Happy, which brings positive news to your screen. And also, fitness expert Natalia Katowska has a simple but effective workout for us. Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everybody. And the main theme that we are talking about today is having that fighting spirit. And now we have on the lovely Helena Shard in this week's A Helping of Happy, which brings positive news to your screens. Welcome to the show, Helena. Thank you, Chrissy. How are you? Very good, thank you. Good, good. We've got lots of lovely stories, lovely, lovely case studies. Yeah. So beginning with Ahmed Mohammed. Um, as a young man, he traveled from Nigeria as a refugee mm -hmm. and he was left at a UK airport. Oh. Couldn't speak English. Um, he ended oh. up living on the streets in London. Oh, so can you imagine? Yeah. So he didn't know what to do from one minute to the next. Mm -hmm. Couldn't think about his future, was obviously desperately, you know, worried for his life. Mm -hmm. um, and he he definitely had fighting spirit. I mean, this is, yeah. he's a really great chap. He um, saw some people playing football in a park somewhere. In fact, I'd love you to get him on. But, um, <laughs> and he is a good football player. And he uh -huh. went over and he spoke to them in his way, you know, can I join in? Yeah. He didn't have any shoes, obviously oh. dirty clothes and everything. But the coach, whoever it was, saw potential in him because he was the most amazing player. Mm -hmm. And he was helped from then um, oh, to get back on his nice. feet. He, he learned English, he took exams, did incredibly well. Um, so he's a semi-pro football player now for mm -hmm. Hartford Town Football Club. But the most awesome. remarkable thing is he works for Tottenham's He's a mentor for Tottenham Hotspur Foundation. So he's a Tottenham boy, not far from here. Mm, yeah. yeah, So and he he helps instill confidence in young adults. And obviously he's a great ambassador How because amazing. he can t he God, talks so about his life yeah. um, and they absolutely love him. He's mm. the best ambassador. He really inspires young people. And the good thing about him, he says he doesn't, wherever his football takes him, it may take him to the main league. He will always carry on doing that, sort of giving mm. back which is really Seems lovely. So he'd be a great oh, one to get story. in. Yes, yes, really yes, nice, isn't it? Him. So that's you are lovely. Watching, please yes, we'll find him. <laughs> um, also, another amazing individual, um, incredibly inspiring. I love stories. Stories are so amazing. It's, it yeah. keeps the world going around, doesn't it? It's amazing. Um, Chris Halenga, at 23, she was diagnosed with terminal breast cancer. Um, she, on average, you're given two and a half years to live. Ten years on, she sort of is here to tell the tale of how you can beat the odds. Um, it changed her life hugely, mm. but actually lots of things for the better because she was drifting at the time. She was in a terrible relationship. She thought she could get happiness through people, okay. that kind of thing. She was really drifting. Um, she obviously at the time, I think the sad thing about it is she went to the doctors three times saying she knew something was wrong. And they said, it's hey, nothing. it's hormonal, it's nothing. And of course she realised, and it was only 10 years ago, that she didn't even know that much about it, the disease. And and she was very young when she was yeah, diagnosed. Yeah, but she yeah. thought if, if she had been told to check her breasts yes. mm -hmm. all that time ago, she, she you know, obviously could have been diagnosed earlier. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so a little bit resentful, as you can imagine, but she decided to turn that around and put all her effort into starting her own chapter. A charity called Copperfield, which yeah. now is enormous, and it's just it's it's to raise awareness, really, of the disease for, for young people. Again, to check your breasts oh, regularly, really and she is incredibly empowering. And 
And it's her, her determination and passion about this which has kept her going, she believes. It's amazing. Which is great. So it's having that purpose, yeah. which is lovely. Mm -hmm. And because she's so aware of her mortality, she really gets out and does everything. She doesn't plan it. She literally That's goes the thing. for it. When you go through a difficult time, it really puts things into perspective and things that Absolutely. you were taking for granted before and yeah. maybe complaining about. All of that stuff yeah. doesn't matter anymore. You just Absolutely. focus on what's really important. She does. And she's got, yeah. she's got a twin sister and they do a lot together. Oh. But she decided as well to move to Cornwall so she could be near the sea and things. Just small things like she, uh, which you know, I appealed to me actually. So she got a little van and they, they sell tea and coffee in different places. Oh, nice. But also it's a good way of talking to people yeah, yeah. about the charity. Very good. But um, she doesn't fear death. She's done a huge amount. She's done most things she wants to, but she absolutely wants to live and love yeah. life. But she's, she's incredibly inspiring. Another one, I love it when we can talk about people yeah. and bring them onto the show, <laughs> hopefully, which is great. Um, just a quick one, in fact, which is going to talk about. So Brampton Manor Academy is now the most incredible school. It's one of the poorest boroughs in London. It's in London of London Borough of Newham. And it used to be a school that was absolutely awful. You know, it always used to fail Ofsted. Um, now, the headmaster is so inspirational. Um, you know, bringing the children to teach them that you make a positive change in the world yeah. and if you work hard you can achieve anything. And the good thing about it is that 41 students recently um, have received offers from to Oxford and Cambridge. Oh, wow. And many of them are from ethnic minorities. Yeah. So obviously they're the first generation of their families going to oh, university, wow. which is, amazing. they wow. are really inspiring young people. Wonderful. Which is lovely. Lovely story to end on, Helena. Thank you Thank so much, you. my lovely. And we'll see you again next time. See you again. Thank you. Okay, everybody. So now it's time to get our fitness kits on because we have a workout with Natalia Katoska. Hey guys, it's again me, NK Do It With Nat, Natalia Katowska, a fitness expert. Today I have for you some challenging workout, push-up variations. Ah, it's scary, I know but I will take you through the whole workout. We're gonna do this together, especially ladies. I know we struggle with those exercises, so stay with me. First exercise, first variation, we're gonna do against the wall. So, pick up a wall in your house. Make sure that your feet are nice and close, uh, shoulders width apart or just tight together. What you wanna do, you wanna lean against the wall, hold it, and push yourself off the wall. You can add a little bit of clap, so that will give you better momentum. So you go down, clap, and again. And you wanna go at least 10 times like that. Tuck your belly button in, squeeze your butt cheeks, use your glutes, hamstring, quads. You can be on your, just like you can see on your toes, or you can be flat-footed, but the toes will engage more muscles. 10 of those will be enough to get you ready for the Another variation that I prepared for you. So stay with me and let's move to the floor. Okay, so we're now moving to the floor. Second variation of our push-ups. I call them the walkout push-ups. So what you do, you wanna take your feet a little bit now wider. So a little bit more than your shoulders width apart. What you're gonna do, you're gonna walk all the way down. Use your hands. Do the wide push-up all the way up. Walk back all the way up. That's the one, and then we're gonna do 10 of those. So, down, push, up, breathe while you do this. All the way up, that's the second one, and again. So we wanna make sure that we do at least 10 of each. That will give you that nice muscle burn in your tricep, biceps. That's the second variation. The third variation, the very last one, will be on our knees. So I will move to the side so you can guys see me properly. You can stay on your knees, I don't mind that at all. Sometimes it's better to stay on your knees because you can concentrate more on your upper body work and really correct your technique. So let's stay on our knees. Hands as close to your chest as possible. So you wanna make sure that your hands are actually above your shoulders. So you go down, you can drop your chest. You can take your hands off the floor, push yourself up, tuck your belly button in, squeeze your glutes, butt cheeks, and go down, take your hands off the floor, up, down, 
Uh, at least 10 of those. If you can, just keep your hands where they are and push yourself up with one motion. Don't drop your chest. It's your choice. So you can start off from completely um, leaving your chest on the floor, pushing yourself off the floor, or you can keep going. So we have three different variations. Wall, walk out, push ups, and then on our knees, using our tricep, biceps to build up. It's your choice. Make sure you do 10 of each. Repeat that again three or four times the way you feel like it. And we're pretty much done for today. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're gonna try it with me at the house or wherever you are in any environment. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much to Natalia there. So after the break, we have Onili suited with a recipe that will give you energy and wake you up for a fight. And also Dr. Rob Hicks will be answering your medical questions, including this one. From time to time after a shower, my whole body gets extremely itchy, even after moisturizing. Why does this happen? Find out what Rob has to say after this. Hi, I'm Chrissy B, host of the UK's only TV program dedicated to mental health and well-being, The Chrissy B Show, which airs on my TV Sky 191 every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Follow our social media on YouTube, Instagram and Twitter at Chrissy B Show and our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. For more information, visit chrissybshow.tv. Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everybody. So we've been speaking about having a fighting spirit on this program today. And of course, if you're gonna have that kind of spirit, you also need energy. So what better way to get that energy than through what you eat? And we have on now nutritionist Lily Suter to show us a recipe. But first, just gonna speak about some energy giving foods as well. Welcome to the show, Lily. Hi. <laughs> Lovely to have you on, my darling. Thank you. So you will be making for us something very simple in just a moment. But first of all, can you tell us you know, what foods actually give energy to people and what can, people look out for? So I think the biggest thing to look at when it comes to energy is sources which provide slow release energy. So short bursts of energy are fine if you're going on a run or you're going to the gym, but throughout the day we really want sustained fuel to the body and the brain. And the best sources of food which do provide sustained fuel are those which are fibre rich. Okay. So when we're looking at carbohydrates, all carbohydrates break down to sugar as an energy source but the fiber rich, slow release carbohydrates are the ones that provide sustained fuel. Mm -hmm. So anything which is whole grain, so brown bread, brown pasta, brown rice, mm -hmm. even oats, um, quinoa, beans, lentils, uh, chickpeas are all sources okay. of, of fiber rich uh, mm -hmm. carbohydrates. Okay. Yeah, and then another factor which you could think about would be adding protein to a carbohydrate to provide even more sustained fuel. So what happens when you add a protein to a carbohydrate? So say you've got your piece of toast, which is the carbohydrate, mm -hmm. and you add a protein rich egg to that toast, that protein helps to slow the rate at which that toast will break down into sugar. So oh, you get more sustained fuel throughout the day. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Same That's as great. if you had some fruit, so you yeah. had a banana, and you combine that banana with protein rich yogurt, that banana would break down into sugar at a slower rate than if you just had the banana on its own. Okay. So you really want sustained fuel. Oh, excellent advice. Thank you, yeah. Lily. So what were you making for us today? Yeah. So today we're gonna to be making some energy balls. They're mm. peanut butter and chia energy balls. Okay. So we've got our slow release carbohydrates, which are the oats. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your protein source as well, which is going to be the peanut butter. And then you've got your fiber rich chia seeds. Fiber yeah. helps to provide sustained fuel as well. Mm -hmm. And instead of chocolate, we're putting in some raw cacao nibs, which gives yeah. it that kind of chocolatey flavor, but are really rich in antioxidants yeah, and low in fancy. sugar. And we're having a little bit of honey as well, which gives it a bit of sweetness, but it's not going to be mega sweet like chocolate bars and yeah, sweet yeah. foods you have. Okay, so let's get started. Yeah. Then. So first of all, we have the oats. So if you mm -hmm. want to just put the oats into the bowl, so it's around 90 grams of oats. Okay. And it's best to choose the ones which are kind of half broken down, half okay. ground. And then the next ingredient we put in is the honey. Yeah. And you can obviously adjust the quantities. So if you like something slightly sweeter, you can add a bit more. Yeah. But generally, I put in around two tablespoons. Okay. Lovely. 
And then the next ingredient is our peanut butter. I usually like to go for an unsweetened peanut butter and that's going to provide the protein and lots of healthy fats as well. People sometimes think they have to stay away from peanut butter, but that's not true. No. Peanut butter's good for you. Absolutely. Lovely jabba. And then the next ingredient would obviously be the cacao nibs. So these are so rich in antioxidants mm. and they've got that chocolatey flavour as well. Um, if they're too bitter, you can put dark chocolate in, yeah. but I generally would go for cacao nibs I suppose nibs if you've first. got all the other ingredients there already, so it doesn't yeah. taste that, that strong, Absolutely. does it? Absolutely. Like if you have them on their own, they're probably quite, yeah. yeah. Gives it a nice okay. crunch, basically. Yeah. And then the last ingredient is the chia seeds, which are really, really fibre rich. Just around mm -hmm. two tablespoons has about 11 grams of fibre. Okay. Um, we're meant to aim for 30 grams a day. And currently, as a population, we're consuming half of mm -hmm. our recommended intake. So this is a, a fast track way of increasing your fibre intake. Okay. And then literally, it's a case of just mixing it everything together. It smells healthy together. already, Lily. <laughs> mm. So you have to mix it for, for quite a while just to make sure that it's all um, combined and the yeah. oats soak up the oils. I hope you're going to roll these. Yes, a little bit <laughs> messy. <laughs> Yeah, you can do these in a blender though, can't you, you as well? You can do them in a blender. The reason why I haven't done them in a blender is because often the one thing that puts people off creating energy balls <laughs> is the fact that they have to wash the blender. Yeah, so that's true. a bit of a, a faff, really. So, okay. So having it in a bowl is, uh, is a lot easier. Yeah. What other things could you use apart from peanut butter? Because I know sometimes people use tahini in, in, in things you like this as well. You could use tahini, you can use almond butter. If you okay. have a nut allergy, you could also use things like seed butters, like pumpkin seeds, um, sunflower seed butters as well. Oh, okay. There's a I've ton, ton of yeah. types of butters. You can also make your own butters if they are too expensive or if you rather make them yourself at home. And yeah. literally you just roast nuts or seeds and then you put them in a Nutribullet or a blender okay. and they literally will grind down to a, to a nut yeah. butter. Okay. Do you reckon this is ready? I think that should be about yep. ready. Okay, might look a little bit yeah. wide, but you know, when you guys have got more time at home to, yeah. to actually um, <laughs> so stir. So the, the mixture gradually it soaks up all those oils and then you just take Let's an amount our of workspace. it. You roll it in your hand to make an energy ball. And that's it. And then you just leave it in your Simple. fridge and it will kind of harden up. At the moment, yeah. they'll be a little bit soft. Mm -hmm. and they harden up in the fridge or, or even in the freezer and then you can just transport them around for, for, with you and they can make okay. a perfect snack for the morning but also when you have that afternoon sugar craving and yeah. you're looking for a bit of a boost, they're great. Okay, just, just one thing because we spoke about things that can give you energy, is there anything that drains your energy as well that people should kind of be aware of? Yeah, absolutely. So I think looking at caffeine, if you mm. are over reliant on caffeine, it's not always a good thing. People mm. think it's going to boost energy. It will temporarily, but we all have different tolerances of, of caffeine and okay. it can actually end up affecting our quality of sleep. So, you know, it delays our melatonin okay. output, which is our sleep mm -hmm. hormone, and then your sleep gets disturbed and then you feel, can feel really exhausted. So just being cautious, I tend to stop drinking coffee at about 10, 10 a.m. Okay, to make sure it's good. totally out yeah. of my system. Uh, other foods that could drain you of energy. Most food will give you energy, basically. Okay. It's all there for energy, but if you are relying on very fast release carbohydrates so if you're focusing yeah. on things like lots of white refined carbohydrates and um, sugary foods they will give you bursts of energy so they're not necessarily going to drain you immediately of energy but it's not going to last but it's and then you not need more long more. lasting yeah. energy you'll okay. get an energy high yeah. and then you'll get an energy crash okay and when you have that low that's when we tend to feel really fatigued we feel get that energy slump and we often start yeah. craving more quick fix foods okay wonderful lily thank you so much these are thank lovely you. we are going to try one right now guys and it's so easy to make at home great for the kids great for all the family absolutely thank you my thank darling you. we'll see you again very soon great. Okay, everybody, so now it's time to go over to Dr. Rob Hicks in this week's Doctor's Answers. Welcome to the show, Rob. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? Very well, indeed. We're Thank you. very healthy today because we've got fruit instead of cake. It's a nice change, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. We can have some later. <laughs> are you ready for the questions? I am, indeed. Right, so first one, Rob. From time to time, after a shower, my whole body gets extremely itchy, even after moisturising. Why does this happen? 
Do you know, Chris, this is a really common problem. Um, and it's one of the sort of things of modern day living. So there are a number of reasons why this might happen. So for example, it might be that you're in the shower t for too long a period of time. It could be that the water is too hot. Uh, you could be sensitive to the soap or the shower gel that you're using. Um, it may be that actually when you come out of the shower, you're coming out into a colder environment and that can often make the skin very itchy if you go from one, a warm environment into a cold one. Or maybe you're being too aggressive when you dry yourself with a towel and, and that's irritating your skin. So the sort of things to do and try is lessen the time that you're in the shower, make the water cooler, um, maybe think about changing the soap or shower gel that you're using or using an emollient wash, which is just as hygienic, but will moisturize the skin. When you come out, pat your skin dry rather than rubbing it dry um, and use the moisturizer pretty much straight away when the skin is damp because that will lock the moisture in. So you should, those sort of things can help. If they don't help, or if you've got redness or flaking or itch or, you know, or sort of bleeding, or, 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 or swelling of the skin, get your doctor to check it out. Uh, but in the meantime, try those things. And I think one of them, if not a number of them, will help a lot. Lovely, Rob. Next question. My husband has asthma and the other night he was having real difficulty breathing. He was sent home from work and I was really worried and insisted that we go to A&E, but he refused. He uses his, inh his inhaler, but he's still not 100%. He works in construction, but is quite old school and doesn't use a mask even when there's a lot of dust. I'm sure this must have something to do with it. How can I help him and when should I call an ambulance? This is really worrying. This is worrying and this yeah. is, this is, this is, um, this is, uh, somebody who is not taking their asthma seriously. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the stark reality is that every day in the UK, three people die as a result of asthma attacks. Mm. And the majority of these are avoidable. Mm. Um, every 10 seconds in the UK, somebody is suffering a potentially life-threatening asthma attack. Wow. So I'm delighted that you've asked the question because your husband needs to take his asthma seriously. You, you are taking it seriously on his behalf, but he needs to too. The first thing that he needs to do is have a checkup with his doctor or his asthma nurse to go through his asthma action plan to make sure he understands what he needs to do when he gets symptoms of wheezing or shortness of breath. Um, he needs to have his inhaler technique checked to make sure that although he's using it, he's using it correctly so he's getting the benefit. And it might mean that he needs a change in inhaler or an additional inhaler as well. So those are the sorts of things initially that needs to be done. With regards to the mask, make sure that the seal around the mouth is very good, um, in that it's got fine holes in it and that you, you know, the filter is changed on, on a regular basis. So, you know, and also he needs to try and identify what triggers his asthma. So it could be dust, but it could be other things as well, because it's very important that he avoids those. So you asked, how can you help and when should you call an ambulance? Well, you're already helping him by taking his asthma seriously and, and asking what you should do. Um, if he's got symptoms of an asthma attack, then it's important that he sits up, that you help him to breathe slowly and steadily and keep him calm because if he panics, it's going to make his asthma worse. He needs to use his reliever inhaler and take in one puff every 30 to 60 seconds up to a maximum of 10 puffs of the inhaler. When should you call an ambulance? Well, if you haven't got the inhaler handy, definitely call one. If despite using the inhaler, he's getting worse. If after having his 10 doses, his 10 puffs, is not any better or if you're simply worried. Never be frightened to call an ambulance in an emergency of an asthma attack. It's much better to call and get treated than to think everything's going to be okay because sadly often it's not. Oh great. Rob, thank you so much. My the pleasure indeed. Advice as usual. We'll thank see you. you again next time. Thank you. But everyone, if you have a question for Dr. Rob Hicks, all you need to do is email us on doctor at chrissybshow.tv and we do keep all emails anonymous when we read them out on the show. Now, continuing our program theme of putting up a good fight, let's now take this to your home. Perhaps you're surrounded by lots of things, you know that you need to have a good clear out and you're ready to roll up your sleeves, but you have no idea where to start. Well, don't fret because we have declutter expert Sally Walford on hand to give you some very useful tips. Thank you. 
Oh my goodness gracious me, what is all this mess? I don't know about you guys, but I really can't concentrate when there's mess like this around me. So I think we need some help around here. Let's call in our superwoman declutterer, Sally Wolford. Hi, Chrissy. Can you help us, Sally? Oh, yes, Look at I this can, mess. definitely. I'll let you get, Gosh, get on with yeah, it. Girl. Thank you. <laughs> help around here. Yeah, this is um, something that, you know, can be very overwhelming mm -hmm. for some people. And um, even though it, uh, your place or your room might not be this cluttered, you can feel this yeah. overwhelmed as mm -hmm. well. And uh, one of the main questions is that everybody asks me, where do I start? Yeah. Where on earth do I start when I'm feeling so overwhelmed? So I've got a few tips for you, oh, yes. particularly in this scenario, because this is um, replicating like a hallway, mm -hmm. really. Really. And that tends to get um, turned into a massive dumping ground. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. think especially if people have got kids or you're busy and mm -hmm. you're rushing in and out. So what a great place to start. And this is a top tip for any room that you can apply this um, technique. So firstly, where do I start? You just start. So go towards the thing that you're focusing on the most. So at the moment, I'm looking at this orange scarf. Yeah. I don't know about you. So I want to take that off. And what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be sorting the scarf and folding so that we've got one. But then all of a sudden, I think, from even just taking that down, we can now see that we've got rather a lot of scarves. Mm. So not only are we organising, but we're going to probably do a bit of decluttering, yes. I think. What do you think? I think so. Yeah. Always love a good declutter. Yes. So hang on. Would you like me to hold anything for yeah, you? Yeah, let's go for the scarves okay. then. I'll hold those for you. Goodness me. So oh, even... Quite a few scarves here. Yeah. Even just from collating. Mm. a few items you've started your decluttering yeah you know it's given you that and we can probably get rid of these so you know so say for example this one's looking a little bit bobbly so maybe that one could go to the charity shop yep. so we can put that there and then this one's looking not too bad so we can put that one up there and maybe again with that one and then, obviously, after you've sifted through all of your, mm. your your things, you can give to charity, or if they're really holy, you know, we can yeah, perhaps, yeah. or recycle them, yeah, actually, it, so we yeah. can turn them into other things. So there you go, we've just already started our declutter, mm. and now we can move on to hats. Again, another really good thing, because you're now finding out, one hat, two hats, <laughs> How so many? you collect everything like collect for like together? Every, yeah. Everything okay. together, so then you can see how much stuff you've actually got. Yeah. And do you really need all of that stuff? Yeah. So for example, oh, here we go. Big hole. Oh, Big hole, that. that's it. That's yeah. gone to the recycle. And then these two can be hung up. There we go. Now, this is definitely something that happens a lot in any room, actually. Um, so for example, this should, doesn't really belong on the coat hook. This mm. is your cardigan. So this should be actually be in your chest of drawers or in your wardrobe upstairs. Okay. So that's another idea, is that when you're trying to start, why don't you look for things that don't belong in that particular room? Okay. Because yeah. then you're going to be able to send them off to where they're supposed to be, mm -hmm. and then you're going to be giving everywhere a place. Yeah, that's it. So, okay, that's going upstairs. And I think you'll find here, now this is probably for mums with small <laughs> kids and you yeah. know, coming in quickly and things get left behind. Again, kitchen, these need to go to the kitchen mm. and then perhaps this needs to go in a specific area, say for example if it's the swimming kit or something, yeah. then we, we can make a place for that, say has a specific hook for example, mm -hmm. so that you always remember to check it. So they're going away, decluttered, done. Okay, again. Mess on the floor. Yes, look at the floor. That's another good thing. Always start with the things on the floor. Mm -hmm. So if you're finding perhaps that all of that was a bit too overwhelming, take yeah. your site down and just have a look. And normally, the things that might be on the floor are things like plastic bags, uh -huh. newspapers, maybe a magazine, and they're sort of like non-sentimental things. So yeah. you can really grab them. I mean, already, look. And this is another thing that I do find quite a lot of, mm -hmm. is bags and bags and bags. <laughs> <laughs> Some in the front there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Look at that. Goodness me. There you go. 
go gift bag. So that essentially shouldn't be in with the other bags. These are your shopping bags. So once we've done that, there's bits of rubbish there. There's another bag. Oh, there's another one. Correct there in. Go. There we go. Okay, so this can go to your stationery department and those can be hung up beautifully Ooh. so that you remember to take just those with you. Much better. Yeah, yeah. much better, isn't Definitely. it? Already I'm feeling yeah. calmer. <laughs> Thank goodness, yeah. Definitely. So um, again, these are sort of like things maybe from, you know, if you've gone out, when you've been running, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Shoes accumulate in hallways yeah. Yeah. and are quite easy, you know, to to declutter or move to a different area of your home. Mm -hmm. So, but I always have my slippers next to my door. I do. Yeah, <laughs> like that. So put they them can on as stay. soon as you get in. Okay. But as for these, we're going to put these somewhere else. Okay. Cool. Good. Um, school bags. That was the other thing as well. So the satchels. Again, I was thinking for this section, perhaps with packed lunches and mm, swimming. Yeah, there you sense. go, we're now putting everything together. Yeah. So then perhaps even a lower peg for those down there. And then we could put that there. So, there we go. And I said about newspapers as well. Again, you can recycle these. Yeah. So, and um, it's another good place to start. If you go around your home and you tend to like reading a newspaper or a magazine, you'll probably find that they've crept into every single room in your <laughs> yeah. house. So you might as well collate them together. Uh -huh. And then um, you could actually just have a quick flick through them. And if there's any ideas that could show you like a nice calm room or something mm -hmm. that you you would really like to invent in your own home, yeah. you can use those pictures as sort of like a, a memory idea. board. Yeah. So, and then obviously we can recycle the newspapers and magazines, but that's giving you also a really calm, nice vision. Yeah. And that's what you're going to be creating in your home. So that's two uses yeah. for your <laughs> newspapers and magazines. Cool. Okay. Again, this is something that I've seen a few times, just when people travel a lot with work, mm. just um, forgetting to, or not even having the time to unpack. So just, you know, by the door, making sure that you unpack your suitcase so that you take the washing or whatever, and things get put, again, in their, in their places <laughs> yeah. that they're supposed to be, so you don't forget next time, because I can guarantee that whoever's done this is going to be looking for their bikini. Yes, sure. <laughs> when they're <laughs> going point. on holiday at some point, they'll be like, where's it gone, where's it gone? So, yeah. yeah. Um, and well, that's again, actually a good practice to have a good habit, isn't it? As soon as you get in, just to empty your bags and things like that. As soon as that's, that's what I like to do. Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. And I think having um, a really um, decluttered handbag actually does yeah. you the world of good. Because you know where everything is. Yeah. You can yeah. get everything out easily. And it also makes you, you know, feel ready to start the day and focus. True. So, you know, all my decluttering tips make, I want everybody to feel focused and energised yeah. and clutter free. So the, the, the important thing is just to start because some, we were saying earlier, you know, it's, people don't know where to start, they don't know where, you know, what area to start in, but just yeah. start somewhere and it, then... Like, exactly, because you do, it doesn't matter where you start with decluttering. Yeah. It's just as long as you um, start it and just don't, and again, be kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. If you have got a lot of stuff, it's going to take you a little while to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't just go overnight, you know. Right. So maybe baby steps, maybe just one item at a day, mm -hmm. you know. So that can work. Brilliant. Sally, thank you so much. Thank you. And Thanks, we'll see Lizzie. you again very soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Well, everyone, if you would like more information about Sally and her business, all you need to do is visit our website, chrissybshow.tv, scroll down, and you can find all her information there. And now it's time for my final thought of the day. Thank you very much to all my guests that have been on today's programme. And also a special thank you to our real life story today, Rama, who has you know, progressed so far from being shy to speak, from you know, not socialising at all, to today being confident and being able to speak on TV and radio, I think it's come so far and it's just proof that you know, no matter what you've been through or the limitations that you think you have, you can always overcome all those things and go on to be really successful. 
So what I'd like to speak to you today actually is about fighting spirit, the fighting spirit. And you might say, but Chrissy, I'm so weak, I'm depressed, I'm anxious all the time, I have panic attacks. I don't have a fighting spirit inside of me. I don't have what it takes to overcome these problems. I'm too shy, I'm not confident about myself. But as I've said on this program before, you do have this strength inside of you. You do also have the potential to overcome your problems. And why do I know this for sure? Because like, as I've said before, despite feeling the way you're feeling, despite feeling depressed, and I know, as you know, I know what it's like to be depressed because I was there once. I know, you, you know, you feel heavy and you feel like if, if you suffer from anxiety, you have this kind of nerve, nerves in your stomach all the time. I know how that feels, but despite those feelings, despite that heavy load that you're carrying, you still get on with life. Some of you are parents, some of you are teachers, some of you are you know, helping other people. So despite all of that stuff that you're going through, you're out there working, you're out there doing your thing, you're looking after other people, you're still making a difference. And do you know how much strength that actually takes to be able to do that? So don't underestimate yourself and say, you know, oh, I can't, I can't do it, or I'm never gonna overcome this problem. You can. Sometimes it's just the, the case of actually finding the right kind of help, the right kind of support, the right kind of guidance to bring that strength out of you so that you can actually use it to change things in your life. So don't ever kind of compare yourself to other people and think, you know what, I'm not like other people. I don't, I'm not good like them. I'm not confident like they are. You have something special inside of you. So it's just finding a way to get that something special out and using it to your advantage. Well, everyone, we have reached the end of today's program, but if you have a story that you would like to share, please do get in touch with us by emailing info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet or Instagram us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. And if you'd like more information about my mental health journey, to read about all the problems that I used to have and you know, not being confident at all about myself, but how I changed all of that, you can visit my personal website, which is mylifeafterdepression.com. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Four, three, two, one. The other thing to do is for him to try and identify. Sorry. Um... Sorry. <laughs> this is annoying fly and it's just really sat on my face. I'm right. so sorry. Okay. It's really like, mm, yeah, thought, yeah. it's gonna land on my nose any second. Let me just swat it. Well, everyone, if you'd like more information about Sally and all her services, maybe I shouldn't say that. How, how would you say? <laughs> <laughs> how would you say for you about your job? Yeah, no, your business? Business, okay. Yeah, yes. All right, sorry. <laughs>